Okay, and welcome to today's video. I will be showing you how to replace, repair, or simply change your safety on your Gen 2 or ATV2 WeTech M9. One of the first things you want to make sure is what generation you have. This is a Gen 2 or an ATV2, and you'll notice that it has two very small screws here. Gen 1s will only have one screw. The one screw on a Gen 1 is 1.5 millimeters, while the Gen 2 and ATV2 series is a 1.3, which is very small. This isn't something that you can get in one of those multi-pack kits at Walmart, unfortunately. But you can find these, you can get these. You're also going to need a very small flathead screwdriver. The screwdriver will be needed. This is actually too big, but it's the smallest I have. I'll have to make do. I got things to keep parts in because there will be parts. Of course, safety glasses. Can't forget those, or at least you shouldn't. All right, so first things first is you want to remove the slide from your M9. And you'll want to remove the guide rod. And now remove the outer barrel and inner barrel assembly. And this will leave you with the nozzle. Now, the reason why you may also need to learn about the safety is either replace the nozzle replace the spring that goes alongside the nozzle as Gen 2's only have one spring, or perhaps part of your safety is not working in the upper section here. In order to get to any of that, or even the rear sight, which is held in by two Phillips screws, not that Allen on top, that's fake. It is held in by two Phillips screws on the bottom. In order to get to any of that on a Gen 2, you need to take this safety out. So with that being said, Find my Allen key here. This is righty tighty lefty Lucy. And you'll notice. Now, oftentimes people will say that their safety will will have broken. Safety broke off. Often what they are referring to is that these little screws, they're very sensitive. They're not torqued down very much. So these will come out. And when these come out, this half of the safety will come off. Their safety will still work, but oftentimes people believe that their safety is broken. And that is not always the case. These screws are just not tied in very well. They don't have a lot of torque to them. They don't have much resistance, and you do not want to strip these at all. Very small, very tiny. Make sure you don't lose these. You probably will want to keep both of them. And now you are done with this. So I'm going to put that in there with them. This part will now slide off. And this is often what breaks off. It doesn't necessarily break. It just simply falls off because, as I said, those screws are not held in by much. This leaves you with this. Now, in order to get this side off, you must first disconnect this little flathead in there as it holds on to the lever bar that actuates this section here. And this is what deactivates and activates the safety on the frame right here. Spring here. So when you lock this back and you put that on, nothing. Push this part here and now it will shoot. Hopefully that helps out a little bit there. This is again is very small and as you can see, hopefully if I can get this video just right here, it is not flush. It is actually up phrased a little bit. 
So as I said, this is too big. Maybe a flathead screwdriver from like a eyeglass kit. Again, lefty loosey. I want to remove this. Now that is out. This is very tiny. Put that in there. And now for the fun part. You need to push this in. You need this. The part that that screw was just screwed into. You need to recess that into the slide so that this has room for this to clear because then your next step is pulling this up. But you wanna be careful. See that nub right there? That nub is what keeps the safety in check. You can just see it. There's a tiny spring on the inside of that that goes into this. And that little spring keeps it so that you can feel that it has like a selector to it. Essentially that noise, that click, that is that little nub with a spring in it. When you pull this all the way up, it's gonna try to shoot out. So, like I said, first things first, you wanna recess this in there as best as you can. As you can see, it's recessed in there. It's not, you're not gonna get it perfect, but try at least. And then hold your thumb in front of the safety. This is the front of the slide here. You wanna hold your finger here and it shot out anyways. This is what you want to be careful of. The little torpedo, it shoots out. Put that in my cup. And now here's the spring. That spring you can pull out or you can leave. I'm going to pull it out. All right, now your safety is free. In theory, you want to pull this straight out. However, there's a catch. This nozzle protrudes into the back of here. You see this section right here? You're going to see this is the nozzle and this is the safety. If you do what I did the first time I took this apart and you just yanked on this mother, then you will damage the nozzle. The back of the nozzle will get collapsed and it has like this crescent moon shape to it. So what you wanna do is you wanna pull this up and pull this, the nozzle forward. You see how it clears? While pushing on the back here, push this in, pull this out, and there you go. That is your safety. These notches right here. See if I can get this right here. I've never done a video like this before. These notches is where the nozzle goes. And that's what prevents it more or less also from going up and down and coming out horizontally. Now that you have your safety out, that's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna stop this video and then I'm going to continue it and make a next part as to how to change the nozzle, but this is the video on how to do this. In order to put this back together, oh man, do I wanna do that first or next? That's a question. I guess for now, for the point of the video, I will be showing you how to put it back together. Again, same thing, you wanna make sure that the large end is on the end with the dot. This would be the left hand side of the slide. Make sure it's level and that you pull that nozzle forward. And it should lift it up a little bit. There you go. Your safety is back in. Now release the nozzle. You can push it back in so that it's flush here. 
You don't need to worry about that anymore. You're going to want to put your spring back in. There is not necessarily a front or back to the spring, but I've noticed that on mine, sometimes one side is flatter than the other. And you want to put this back in that hole. Now, if you have a really tiny screwdriver or something, you could use that to help guide it in. But for the most part, you want to get it in that recess hole there. Take your little torpedo here, or what else do you want to call it? And you'll notice that on one end it is skinny. That skinny end you want in the spring, like that. Okay. Push that in, and as you're pushing it in, this is why I have fingernails at the moment, I apologize. You want to push that in and get the safety press shit <laughs> you want to get that safety in perhaps if I don't talk myself here ouch okay there you go. You want to get that safety in and then lay it horizontally. And now it should have that click back to it. Now for the other fun part, getting this back up. You see how there's two holes now? That hole in the top is where you want the hole in the bottom to line up with. This is where you're going to put that little screw back in. So what I did on mine is you'll notice that there's a part right here this is actually part of that safety. You push this back up and voila, it is back. You want to make sure that that hole is lined up with that hole because the screw doesn't have very strong threads to it. You will damage the screw and or strip it. I'm going to find that screw again. Make sure it's the flathead screw, not one of the Allen screws. This is an Allen screw. That's an Allen screw. All right. What I like to do is I like to put this on the end of my screwdriver first. If I can get to focus, it is on the end of the screwdriver here. And now line it up in the hole and slowly screw it in. If there's a lot of resistance, if there's any resistance at all, if you feel it skipping threads, then it is not going in right because there is no resistance to these screws. And make sure that it is flush with this outer part and not the inner part. If it's flush with the inner part, come on, focus. Focus. There we go. If it's flush with the outer part, then it is good. If it is flush with the inner part, then you screwed it in too far and you probably broke it. Come on, focus. And now, you can put the safety on. And you'll notice that the screws are on the top now. Screw holes. So you take your safety and you put it back in. Now you'll notice that I did that so that the safety is covering up that second red dot there. Hole should line up, and now you put your little screws back in. You'll notice, if I can get this to focus, there are two sides to this. Come on. This is the Allen screw side. 
and that is not. So no, you'll see two tiny holes, but it is not double-sided. Again, there will be no resistance to this. And of course, I dropped my Allen key here. All right. So after you get the screws flush, you shouldn't be able to see them too well. They should be flush. Might be a little on the edges here. Your safety should work again. Yeah, probably would help if I put the outer barrel back on, wouldn't it? But anyways, should function as a decocker still. That's what makes it a Gen 2.